Hey guys, uh, I'm going to take a few minutes to talk about something that's pretty near and dear to my heart, and that is the topic of using quote unquote bass cranks for musky. Wherein there really is no such thing as a musky crank or a bass crank, they're all just different shapes and sizes and stuff. What's really interesting to me about bass cranks, it's a long historical explanation for this, but the fact being, because trolling isn't really an accepted tactic in bass fishing, which I feel like it should be, but it isn't. When they design their crankbaits to get down to a certain depth, they can't design them to be trolled. So like you can extend the dive curve, putting out line behind the boat, keep a constant speed. They have to hit that depth, unless you get creative and put them on a Carolina rig, they have to hit that depth on a single cast. So when they're making these crankbaits, you look at a lot of musky cranks and they're more, you know, kind of like spread out. The bill isn't like, they're more designed to dive kind of like this, as opposed to like this. They don't really dig too deep. They can go deep, but they're not designed to have a steep a dive curve. They kind of more track like this. They're not going straight down. But bass cranks, by their very nature, because they have to get down as quick as they can to stay there so they can get down to the depth on a, on a certain cast, they're designed to dive super deep really quick. That comes in really handy when you're musky fishing for lots of reasons. Uh, one of the big reasons is because you don't get a lot of baits that can do that in musky fishing with a cast, so you're going to fish over a lot of things when you're fishing just a normal musky bait where you might want to actually come down a deep weed edge, down into timber, stuff like that, in areas that you can't even troll, because you have to make like a short cast, like some of these weed lines and stuff like this, we're fishing into fallen timber, obviously you can't troll because there's trees. So the best way to do it is to take some of these baits with an incredibly steep dive curve and fish those through instead. Now, I mean, there's a lot of deep cranks out there. I'm just gonna talk about a handful today or some of my favorite. Um, but it's really interesting because a lot of guys will go through a shop, they'll look down a row, and it's, it's hard to tell sometimes what they're going to do before you get them in the water. But, I mean, you can take two or three different crankbaits that might say dives to 25 feet, and they'll all dive to 25 feet, but somewhat a little bit differently. Like, some will be super fast rising, some will suspend, some will have a little bit, like a very tight action, some will be a little bit more like this. So that's something I would really like to take into, I'd like to take into consideration when I'm picking up a crankbait for musky fishing that's a bass crank. So we're gonna talk about a few of those. I'm gonna start out with the biggest one of the bunch. This is one of my new favorites. This is a Livingston lure. Uh, it's called a Deep Howler, I believe. And what's really interesting about this is like, yes, I don't know if you can hear this. They get wet and they make a bait fish sound. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't give a shit. I don't really, I don't care. It's got rattles, so it's, I don't care. The thing I do like about this is that this is an incredibly well-built deep diving crankbait that weighs over two ounces for bass, which makes it easily suitable for throwing on even heavy musky gear. It has a really nice slow rise. It rises from the back. The bill's actually gonna be facing down when you fish it. So it's not even gonna sit like this so much. It's already kind of engaged to dive every time you even pause it, which is really nice, especially when you're just twitching and pausing. Because if it always comes like this, if it always rises up like this after you pause it, you're gonna have to give it a little bit more of an oomph to get the twitch to engage, but if it's already sitting like this, you can tap it and it'll just kind of dance out like that and that comes in really handy. Most of the bass cranks that they make nowadays do that though. Um, even though it's got the little bait fish thing in it, that's whatever. But you can tell some of the little internal components of it, the electronics, that's part of what adds the weight to it, which makes it better. And that, um, that makes it, I think, dive a little bit deeper too. Like they've done the waiting well to where it's just a super slow rise, almost neutral buoyancy. I don't really, I'm not a big fan of the sinking crankbaits. I don't know of any deep diving bass cranks, bass cranks that sink, but even the ones that are designed to suspend, I don't really like that. I like them to have just a very slow rise. So when you get into trouble, you can actually let them rise up. But then again, when you have the rise and you have the buoyancy of the bait working against the weight, a lot of times they'll weight the bill. <clears throat> so that's what provides the consistency. If the whole thing was neutrally buoyant, it would kind of set level. If it sank, it would fall like this, or a lot of times it loses its own control and there's not really a median line by which it falls, it just kind of tumbles. When you have buoyancy working against the weight, it'll actually keep the same position the whole way up, even if it's just a little bit of buoyancy against the weight and the, and the buoyancy is winning. That's something really cool about that. Um, I'll show you a little quick in the water what I like about these. The other cool thing about the Livingston too, it's got really good hooks. Hello. And it's got a little bit of a stutter to its step. So you can see it's a slow rise. That's even on a steel leader. So I can crank it super slow. Let it rise. I mean, I just maybe put three to handle turns and you can see it's still rising. See, that's the neat thing. Even though it's a slow rise, 
I mean, really, you can, you gotta watch them sometimes, they'll foul. But if you're really careful with them too, you can almost use these as shallow twitch baits. But you can see how that bait, when you crank it, It's got a little bit of a stutter to its step. It tracks straight. You're not gonna be able to see it right there. There you go. Just showing how deeply it dives really quick. So it always, even when you stop it, it always returns to that position. You can kind of make a dance. That bait is really good at fishing deep timber. It's not the best, like if you were gonna fish an extended bottom. It dances over it pretty well, but like if I'm gonna fish bottom a lot and just get it down, I like some of the ones that have a little bit more buoyancy so you can kind of just tap them, tap them, tap them. This one rises a little bit slow. So if you're working over a bottom directly and trying to maintain, maintain bottom contact, it almost does it a little too well. Like it's just gonna stay digging into the bottom. There's not enough buoyancy working against it to make it really good for that. Especially if you wanna turn around and troll one of these things. If you're just trying to fish through deep timber, hit something and suspend it, it's really good for that. You can see even when I'm just moving it like that, like it, it tracks, but then it's got a little bit of a stutter. That makes it really good if you're just straight retrieving it too. You see, it's, it's got a little hitch. That's a fairly new one, I think, but let's talk about one of my all-time favorites. This is the KV Strike King, Strike King KVD 10XD. This is one of the better, actually, it's probably the first bass crank I really ever fell in love with for musky fishing. It's about an ounce and a half, I believe. It's got a lot of the same similar tendencies. It's a slow rise, a little bit faster. It doesn't have quite the thump when you reel it. It's a smoother pull. And because it's that and it's a little bit faster, I really like this for cranking on bottoms and tapping it because it'll rise up. So you can let it kind of come up above it and then tap it again and it'll hit the bottom, hit the bottom, hit the bottom. And then if you want to reel it really slow, it'll actually track on the bottom, but the buoyancy will keep it from like just digging into the mud. It'll actually stay down. I'm just going to make a cast here really quick and talk about it because I'd like to see if I can get a fish on film. So this one you can see, it's a little bit more consistent action than that howler. Like it doesn't naturally stutter as much, but that's kind of cool because then you can really make this one do some cool little dance out things twitching. Nothing too heavy, you don't want to rip it. You just want to, kind of the secret to working bass cranks like that is you don't want to feel the head shake. If you just feel the pull and let it go, but if you, jank, if you pull it so hard that you feel it actually engage, you've jerked it too hard or actually too far. But that's an incredible little bass bait. Everybody, everybody should have one of these in their musky arsenal. And it's, you know, I'm throwing it on a musky setup, you know, t traditional nine foot, extra heavy. And baits like this, I would definitely try to throw them on the stiffest, heaviest rod you can, just for the sensitivity factor. But taking this through some deep timber or down a break line, just letting it rise. You can see it probably rises about twice as fast as that howler. It's a fantastic bait. And you can even like, I've caught some nice fish just doing this, like just throwing it out. If you just tap it up, you might be able to get it down seven or eight feet on a good cast. You can always just let it rise. It's got that nice, cool little janky motion to it. That's a 10XD. This is a little bit different. This is a six cents. This is their model of deep diver. Weighs about the same as the 10XD. You can see it's a very similar bill shape. It's even got the little angle up. I don't know if you can see that, but like the bills kind of angle up a little bit in profile, but this one, it happens a little bit sooner. This one kind of happens right at the tip. This one's particularly good at bottom bouncing because it's probably the most buoyant of them all. Except for that one, which sinks. <laughs> no, it's a slow rise. 
it's weird. Some of these bass cranks, they get really inconsistent. I know some of the ones I bought with that, they're, uh, they rise pretty quick. This one must have a little leak in it or something. Sorry, but this one, you can tell it's got another consistent action. A little bit of a hitch to its step. It runs a little bit more level. Like you can see there. Like the other ones, when they're running, their nose is down a little bit more. Like that one's got the head down, but it's more tilted at like a 30 degree than a 45. Like even when you let it stop, it tilts down. You start moving it again, it kind of rights itself. You're not gonna be able to get it down as fast, as deep. But this have a really nice little action. And because that bill, I don't know if you could tell, the bill's a little bit wider than some of the others, where this would really come in handy if you have some like medium depth timber, somewhere eight to 12 feet. And what that's gonna do is, because it's not diving super deep down into the bushes, it'll kind of come across the top of them. So if you're fishing parallel down them, you could do that and cast down the bank. Instead of fishing down through the branches, it would come across them. And that big bill is actually gonna keep it out of trouble a little bit more because it kind of pushes it out of the way. Yeah, sometimes I had a, as a reference, I had a Livingston lure the other day that I bought and I actually had to send it back because it was a slow sink. And I was like, I thought these were supposed to float. And I called the company and they were like, oh yeah, it's supposed to do that. This one, uh, you can see this one's seen some more. This is one of the new line of really cool Berkeley crankbaits that have been coming out the past few years. And I'm particularly fond of this one. That's a Berkeley dredger. And they make these things in probably, I think, five or six different sizes. This is the biggest one, so it's 25.5 feet. And that's for a cast. So like you can actually probably troll this down to 40 feet if you want. But it's one of the smaller ones. It has a really nice, tight, I'm gonna say crisp action. The other ones have more of a thud. Like you can kind of feel it working in the water. This one's a much more just Kind of the difference on like a drum set when they take the brushes and the cymbals. It's like that's kind of what it feels like more than just hitting something. So it's a really nice, subtle action. Has a slow rise even on this leader, which I don't use giant leaders. I use those 90 pound steel leaders pretty much for anything heavy. But I mean, still, it's not, it's heavier than fluorocarbon. So I mean, it's not like throwing it on nothing. These are really nice for pitching. These are pretty good at almost anything. Like you can twitch them a little bit, work them like a twitch bait. They're exceptionally well going through deep timber if you're fishing down with it, parallel. It whittles through it. Has that really nice tight little action. You can see that, like the other one's just more of just a whole body shake. That one just has a really tight turnover. And that's about an ounce and a quarter, I think, in a package that's much smaller than the other ones. And it's honest, honestly something I really like about it too. As odd as that sounds, I mean, I know we're already in bass crank world, but like this one being a little bit smaller, it's kind of a nice thing. And I've tried this, I've tried the other ones too. Like they make, you know, smaller versions of this. There's one that's like three quarters of an ounce, 18 feet. I don't know. I, I just, this is small enough for most things, musky related. And it just seems like the other ones, when you have to put them on the lighter tackle, they just, they don't dive quite as well as this. Even though they're not supposed to dive as deep, it's like, it's almost like they're not really much of a deep diver to begin with. That's the other thing, these little tight action ones, they whittle away weeds and stuff a lot better. I don't know if you notice now that it's wet, it's actually a little bit of a weight in the bill. It's kind of cool because that's actually what helps keep it oriented like that when you pause it. Makes it sit just right even when you let it sit and slow rise so like you let it sit and there's that little weight in the bill it's already set to engage on the next thing so you can just do that give it a tap give it a tap and it really doesn't lose a lot of ground too you can fish through this really super slow crank it down hit the bottom let it rise give it a crank pop 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 
and it doesn't miss any ground because like it's already set up to dive as soon as it gets any kind of tension against it. Whereas it doesn't have to like pull forward and engage. It's already set to engage. And that's, that's pretty cool. A lot of the bass cranks do that. I've never seen too many at this size that do that that well on musky tackle. The big ones, even the big ones that I showed you earlier, maybe the Lucky Craft's about the only, or the uh, Livingston's about the only one that does that, that well. But that being said, that's four, what is it, four crankbaits that are bass crankbaits from Bass World. But it's kind of cool as more bass guys have gotten to see the value of throwing big outsized things. Musky guys are kind of seeing the value of downsizing a little bit. And there's this little convergence between the two schools of thought where now they're making bass stuff that's easily throwable on musky tackle. That's why now they make these big swim bait rods for bass now. But, you know, like, don't just go out and buy these. Like, I mean, I wouldn't not recommend it, but don't just do that. Go out and start looking at all the bass cranks in the aisles that you've got in your store. And I can think of a few more brands. I don't want to name them. But they've all got pretty decent little virtues to them. What, you know, I can't really think of a bass crank that I've used that I've not seen a purpose for. It's not been useful at some point, especially the deep divers. So that being said, what I'd say is go out to your local bait shop, start looking at some of these deep bass cranks, and start experimenting with it a little bit because they're going to be the same kind of purpose. They're going to be designed to like go deep. But you're going to find they're going to have each little unique tendencies that are going to come in handy at different times. And that's something that you'll be amazed will serve you more than you more than you'd like to admit. Because sometimes you want to get deep, but you can't troll. Or sometimes you want to get deep and you can troll, but you don't want to troll super fast. And these come in really handy too when you're trolling with a trolling motor. Because if you're trying to troll deep with a big motor, and bottom bounce sometimes, you're just gonna dig a trench and it's just gonna be super, 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 super hard on the bottom. You don't necessarily want that, especially if the bottom's a little bit softer substrate, but you take a crankbait like this, you put it on the trolling motor and you make the same pass down like a sandy bank or muddy bank. You know, anything that's not, well, even it works well on rocks too, but like, you can just imagine when you're going slow like that, like 1.8, if you get this thing down and keep it there, it's just gonna constantly be tapping the bottom like this. It's not gonna be, you know, skipping steps because it's going so fast. It's literally just going to whittle across the bottom like this if you put it behind a trolling motor. And that's a really useful way to use them as well. But that being said, don't just do what I do. Think like I think. Think like you think. And explore some of your own little backyard treasures, things at Walmart. You'd be amazed what you find. I actually bought this one at Walmart, so first time I encountered it. But this is Corey Allen. Try these things out. And try other ones like it. Thank you.